Internal medicine can be one of the most overwhelming rotations to do well on, but if you want that coveted honor, here's how to do it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into all the tips for today's episode, make sure if you do enjoy the content today, then check out our other episode on all of the best resources for the internal medicine rotation as well. I'll link that down below, but let's get into it. Oh, number one is to get into the management ASAP and fire your reporter. One of the biggest issues with medical students, particularly on rotations, and I know now because I've been working with them for three years, is that I can easily tell this difference between a student who's gonna get honors on one of my internal medicine rotations and the one who's not, based off of simply how they approach problems. The typical average medical student is going to be comfortable with what was taught during the first two years of medical school being how to essentially take a very good subjective and objective data. On the other end, the student who's much more likely to get honors spends much more time focusing and flexing their muscles on practicing the assessment and plan and management of the individual patient. And so one of the best things you can do for yourself while you're on the rotation is regardless if it's a brand new patient or if you're seeing a patient on a following day that's already been admitted, is to think about them based off of their top three to four problems and what you wanna to do to work up things as well as treat things. So to give you an example of a brand new patient, usually the typical medical student is going to dive into the notes and want to know the history of the patient, if they're smoking, you know, how long have they had high blood pressure, they come out with chest pain, they want to know all the things that medical school teaches you about. But in reality, the bottom line is that most medical students can do that. So to help yourself stand out, you have to think differently. And so whenever I have a student on my rotation or have a sub on my rotation, the first thing I tell them to do is to look for the problems that you're going to cover. And a pro tip on how to do this if you're admitting a new patient is to not go to the notes first, is usually your natural inclination, but instead to go to the other objective data. And then I may actually dive into their history and their past notes and their medications to get an idea of who this patient is, but by doing so, I'm essentially trying to create a big list of problems. And then eventually I should be able to group three to four of them together and saying, oh, their fever, their hypotension, and their high white count is actually from an infection. Their urine looks dirty. This patient looks like they have a UTI. Cool, that is one problem. You're essentially starting to manage this patient and diagnose them without diving into the reporting phase of what most medical students do. And on a similar note, if you're taking care of a patient who's already been in the hospital and you're about to think about writing your progress note or present them as an update, then always think about what are the main things that we'll be doing to this patient today to help them get closer to home or to discharge. So what are their main problems? Ideally find three to four things. Ask yourself, do I need to work up anything more? Do I need to change my treatment plan? And then focus on your subjective and objective. If you can do that, you're already starting to think as a future physician, much less of a third year medical student. Thus, it's much easier to get honors. So again, fire the reporter, focus on the management. Number two, and this goes without saying, make sure that you're an authentic team member. Now I say authentic because I have a lot of medical students on my rotations or personally that I worked with in medical school I try to force the the fit and they essentially try to look more impressive than they are actually trying to be helpful you want to figure out the dynamics of who your upper levels your interns are and your attendings are and essentially understand what their expectations of you are so usually on your first day of the rotation try to simply ask like what do you expect me to be doing and what can I do to best serve you the team the patients and as well grow so I can get the best results possible if you have a quality group of residents and attendings then they will tell you what their expectations are but whatever they tell you kind of think of that as like the bar of just doing good enough your plan should be to become phenomenal to be memorable and to leave a difference not necessarily a mark and so one of the best ways you can do that on your team is saying cool if you expect me to see four patients on a daily basis i don't need to like flex and try to do five but i'm going to take care of those four patients as best as i can one pro tip that i will give to students on rotations is that you should know your patient better than i do and they should know you better than they know me so if you can go into a room with your entire team the patient looks at you first that already gives me a good impression that you built a good report and that you've worked to try to see that patient multiple times an easy way to do this is to focus on the rule of three try to see your patients at least two to three times a day whether it be number one one, during your pre-rounding when you're in the hospital, number two, when you go with the entire group again to see the patients, ideally a third time once in the afternoon to make sure that the patient's doing okay, particularly if you made any change to their management. If they had pain earlier in the day and you try to make a change to it, go back and say, oh, this patient is now not in pain or they're less nauseous or this treatment is still not working. Maybe we should do X, Y, and Z. Going back to number one, you're giving a management suggestion of what to do next now that the original plan didn't work out. And I'm being very careful to highlight that being a good team member doesn't just mean you're doing scut work or trying to find you know old records from hospitals or doing busy work that is in the way of your other team members sometimes you can do the same quality of care that your interns your residents are providing but just because you'll be able to see less patients ideally you should have quality rapport and relationships with those people so then you can practice making true management decisions as if they were your own patients because they really are tip number three is to keep a daily to-do list for the entire team one thing that i found to be very successful when i was a sub i particularly on a cardiology rotation is that although i only had four to five patients of my own the team had 14 usually for every patient
patient, I was paying attention to what was going on with them as well as what type of things need to be done. Now, not everything was something that I could actually do, but because I had that list, I could easily look at my intern and say, hey, you have a lot of patients today. I can easily help you something with Mr. Johnson, Mrs. Evans, and blah, blah, blah. Even though they're not my patients, there's something that I could easily take care of, and if I have any questions, I can ask you, is that okay? Any intern or resident who hears that understands that one, you were paying attention to rounds, to patients that weren't even yours, but two, you actually are giving a really wholehearted desire to help them without any strings attached. If you do that, you will realize your rapport between your interns, particularly, and your upper level residents will start to shine, and they'll start to basically speak your praises without you really having to do so in front of your attendings. And on the flip side, one benefit that I found from this daily to-do list is when I transitioned to my early years of residency, my work that I had as an intern didn't feel that much different than a sub I because I was almost kind of mini managing whatever tasks were left for my interns after I was done with my own tasks. So because I already had some experience of doing more than a sub I level, but less than an intern, the transition was a lot more natural. Number four is to do your daily UWorld practice and review. Now, most students know that UWorld is going to be the king of all resources when it comes to step two studying and particularly shelf exams like internal medicine. But when you deal with a rotation in a topic as broad as internal medicine, you really need two things. One, you need enough consistency and number two, you need to make sure that you review your mistakes as much as possible. And so depending on how long your internal medicine rotation may be, the main recommendation I would give you is to find the amount of questions that you have to do on a daily basis to ideally get all of the questions that you will done within about two thirds of your rotation. So for example, if you have six weeks, try to finish all of the UWorld questions in internal medicine within four weeks. So then you have two weeks to essentially do other practice exams as well as go and review your mistakes. Now, once again, this is a minimum bar of doing well, but again, if you wanna increase your chances of doing well in your rotations, as well as remembering things for yourself and actual rotation, then the next thing I would tell you to do, and this actually worked well for me, is whenever you take a question, if you miss it just blatantly, or if you guess, but you guess correctly, but you didn't actually understand the connections between ideas and you world or whatever practice questions you were doing then make sure that you collect those into some kind of system if you're interested you guys can check out some of the programs that we have down below either the crushing clinicals or level up your studying where we talk about essentially good ways to collect your mistakes regardless of what method you use whether it is a word doc an excel document writing them down or using flashcards again we recommend a bunch of different options down below in any of those programs Regardless of what you do, make sure you do it consistently. So you may decide, for example, that you have an eight week rotation and thus to do all of your questions between six to seven weeks, you wanna do about 30 to 40 questions a day. That may be your situation. Also make sure you give yourself and dedicate time where you're reviewing the mistakes from the past few weeks. And so if I had a notebook where all my missed questions were there or an Excel document, I would make sure that I would take about 10 to 15 days and go through those mistakes and essentially move on to the next one. That way, again, I'm not likely to make the same mistakes on my shelf exam step two, but I'm also learning for the rotation itself. Tip number five is to be interested and most importantly in your personal growth. Obviously it's important to be interested in our rotation, but I find that most students will try to force this, particularly if they're not interested in internal medicine. If you're trying to go into surgery, like you're not offending me by choosing a different field. I actually don't care. And I'm actually encouraged to try to teach you things practically that I know that you may have to know as a surgeon and then try to make the rotation as useful as possible. So you don't have to feel like you have to force internal medicine on yourself to make it look like you're interested. And the flip side, doing things like taking care of your patients and actually just wondering like where am I on different levels of patient care where am I on presentation where am I on patient interaction where am I on management decisions and then even within each individual disease maybe you know really well how to take care of a patient with heart failure but you suck when it comes to a patient who has cirrhosis or may have alcohol withdrawal or you name it if that's the case then go ahead and read about those situations ask yourself like what type of things that I not do that my patients and my residents ended up recommending maybe my attendings added to the patient's care that I can now add Add to my future patients. If you focus on your growth and specifically if you're asking feedback from your residents and saying, how are my presentations? How's my management skills? What type of things would you do differently if you were me? And working on those on a week to week basis, if you had an eight week rotation, that is a lot of room for growth. But the only way you can actually have consistent growth is by asking for feedback, being reflective on your own skills, and most importantly, working on them. One thing that I don't share enough on the channel is while I'm an internal medicine physician now, there is a part in the middle of my internal medicine rotation that I actually considered not doing the field because I didn't think that I was good enough. I didn't think that my knowledge base was good enough. I didn't feel like my management skills were good enough. But because because I reflected on that fact and the fact that I also had three weeks left, I made small adjustments into my management, my patient interactions, as well as just focusing on what I was doing and what I wasn't doing to take care of the patients that my upper levels and my attendings were. But this tip goes for any single rotation. To be interested, you don't have to force it. You don't have to bring journal articles. Take care of your patients. Understand what parts of their care you don't understand. Ask questions about those. Read about those. Come the next day. Take care of that patient even better. And most importantly, if you have a patient with the same problem, really make sure that you can actually dominate it. It's almost like 
like if you had the same test question presented to you every single week, you wanna make sure you don't miss it over and over again. So take those opportunities, find those signs of progress, and I promise you, you'll do well, and most importantly, you'll actually be noticeable without forcing it. And if these tips on how to do well in the IM rotation were helpful, then make sure you check out all the resources that can help you get those honors, as well as check out the Crushed in Clinicals program down below on how to get honors on every single rotation. But as always, my friends, thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully, I was a little help to you guys on yours, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.